Let's go and talk about all the different ways that we can go ahead and sketch a quadratic. So what I have is three quadratic equations. Two of them are in standard form and one of them is in vertex form. Now what I'll do is I'll highlight the process, the benefits of each one, and as well as what some ways, if you don't wanna sketch it, if you actually need to be a little bit more exact for your teacher or on a test, I'll show you what to do as well. So let's go for the first process. When you have something that is going to be in vertex form, one of the first things that we learn about graphing a quadratic is to be able to identify the axis of symmetry as well as the vertex. Okay, so in this example, what we're simply gonna do is we're going to first identify the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry is going to be the line that the graph is going to be symmetrical about. What's important about the axis of symmetry is also that the vertex is gonna go right through that. So there's one equation that we basically need to make sure, or one part that we need to make sure to be able to do this, and that the axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. All right, so in this equation, when we're talking about b and a, what we're talking about are the coefficients of my quadratic as well as my linear term. Because just remember, a quadratic equation can be written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this case, my a is going to equal a1, and my b in this case is going to be a negative six. Now, one mistake that a lot of students will make is they'll see a negative b, or sometimes my b's look like sixes, sorry, that's me. But um, they'll see that, and what they'll say is like, oh, I already have a negative, so we're good. No, 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 what this means is the opposite of b, right? So the opposite of the sign that you are given. So in this case, since I have a negative six, I'm gonna rewrite that now as a positive six divided by two times one. And I'm just gonna include the one, so therefore we recognize for the accounting that I still did plug it in, and then two times one is just two, six divided by two we know is going to be three. Okay, so now to be able to find the vertex, what we're simply gonna do is gonna take that value and we are going to plug it in for x to find the y value. Because remember what I said, the vertex goes through the axis symmetry. So the axis symmetry is going to be the x coordinate of your vertex. Therefore, to find the y, all we're simply gonna do is take this and plug it in for x. All right, so in this case, we have three squared, which is going to equal a nine. We have a negative six times three, which is going to be a negative 18, and then minus three, all right? So now we do nine minus 18, which would be a negative nine minus three equals a negative 12. All right, so now this is going to be the y coordinate of my vertex. So I've identified my vertex here to be at a three comma negative 12, all right? So now if I need to sketch my graph, what I need to do is I know that the vertex, which is either gonna be the maximum or the minimum of the graph, is going to be at three negative two. 3, negative 12, sorry. Okay, so now what we need to do is just determine does the graph open up or does the graph open down? Well, notice since my A is positive, then I know my graph is going to be opening it up. So therefore, I can just go something like this and go like that. And dot, 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 dot. Now, that's going to be my line of symmetry, which is at x equals 3. So here's the important thing about this process. Since we've identified the axis symmetry, if I wanted to find any points like over here, I know it's going to be replicated here on the other side. So let's say your teacher's like, uh, I need like two or three points for you to provide, you know, what the graph looks like. Rather than picking like random points on both sides, all you simply need to do is pick points on one side of the axis of symmetry, then you can reflect it on the other side. Now, what is the easiest point that we can go and pick? What about when x equals zero? When x equals zero, right, that's going to be the y-axis here. Well, then those two points are gonna be from in there. So let's go and see what this looks like. So therefore, when x equals zero, I have the point negative three. So therefore, my graph is really not that good here, right? You can see that this point, when x is equal to zero, I'm going to be dealing with a negative three. So zero, and then I can go down to negative three, one, two, three. So we can fix that graph. If we wanna be a little bit more direct here. And therefore we have this point here, and then we can say that point is gonna be reflected over there. And again, you can continue this process for more and more x values, either to the left or to the right. Just go ahead and reflect them. Now let's go and look at the vertex form. Now, vertex form is something we learned after we learned this, right? This kind of gives us the idea and the characteristics of the quadratic. And then we realize vertex form is the easiest, fastest, and quickest way 
mostly to be able to graph graphic quadratic. And it's nice because rather than doing all this work to identify what the vertex is, we have actually everything here. So this is the vertex form. And when we're dealing with vertex form, the vertex is simple, just going to be our h comma k. Now notice here, this formula is x opposite of h, right? So therefore, make sure you're taking the opposite of value. So in this case, we have a negative one, so my h is going to be a positive one. So therefore, I can just go ahead and quickly go ahead and graph this. It makes our life a lot easier. Now, a lot of times we are given a graph that we need to graph in vertex form to standard form. The process from converting from standard to vertex form is going to be completing the square. But to keep the video rather simplistic and straightforward, I'm just gonna give it to you already in vertex form. So now we know our vertex and this problem is simply just going to be a positive one too. So let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, and again, from the last example, we know that our A, which is still right here, right? This A is gonna be the same idea as our A over here. If it's positive, we know the graph is gonna be opening up. And if it's down, we know the graph is gonna be going downwards. So here, though, is the next important thing that we need to understand. When we're dealing with a quadratic with no stretching or compression, the first couple points that we're gonna be dealing with off of this is gonna be over one, up one. When A is just going to be our standard, we're gonna go over one, up one. So those are gonna be your next two points. However, what this two is doing is it's vertically stretching our graph. So rather than going over one, up one, we're now gonna go over one, up two. So I can go over one, up two. And remember my thought, remember what I told you originally about my axis symmetry? I know the axis symmetry goes to this vertex, right? So therefore, I know that if this point is over here, right here, then I can replicate that to the next point over one, up two as well, right? And I know it's positive, so I know it's gonna be opening up. So this graph is gonna be a little bit skinnier than that other graph, but it's still gonna share the exact same form that we did over here. And again, I can continue picking more and more points to the left as well as to the right to be able to go ahead and find the shape of that graph. All right, now, in the last example that I wanna do, and actually, I mistakenly wrote this here. There you go, I had to add a negative because I wanted something to go down, but I forgot to change the other two signs. All right, so what are we doing on a problem like this? Now, we could do the axis of symmetry, but I think what you guys recognize here is I'm gonna do opposite B divided by two. I'm gonna have a fraction over here. And that doesn't seem like I really wanna be dealing with fractions, right? That's like, eh, that's not gonna to be too much fun. But guess what? You can do it. And I have plenty of videos going through the process. We could also go and complete the square over here. But since we're gonna have fractions doing it that way, guess what? You're gonna have fractions doing completing the square as well. If we don't have to have the vertex, what is another way that we could just get an idea of what this graph looks like? Well, the idea comes in with the intercept form. All right, and what intercept form basically means is let's see if we can factor this. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of a negative because I could factor this with the negative, but that usually makes the work a little bit more difficult. I don't know why I changed, the, that's supposed to be a positive. What am I doing? That was right, did I factor that? Oh, that's supposed to be a positive, there we go. Okay, cool, I'm good. I don't know why I didn't change that, so sorry. We'll fix the problems now. All right, so now what I do is say, all right, is this going to be factorable? Like, can I factor this? What two numbers multiply to give me a positive six add to give me a negative five? And hopefully you think in your head it's not a negative six and positive one because those are multiplied to give you a negative six. It is going to be a negative three and a negative two. All right, so here's the cool thing. These two values, when set equal to zero, so if you set Y, remember over here, we found the X intercept, I'm sorry, we found the Y intercept because X was equal to zero. Well, if we want to find the X intercepts, we're going to set Y equal to zero. And if we set Y equal to zero, we can now apply the zero product property to solve for these. So why don't we go and find the X intercept? So I'll let zero equals a negative X minus three times a X minus two. Now I could divide by negative one on both sides and now apply, so you could divide by negative one on both sides, get rid of the negative, because that's just a scalar. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. And then I have a X minus three equals zero and an X minus two equals zero. You applying the zero product property. So X equals three and X equals two. Now what I can do is graph those two intercepts, one, two, three, and well as one, two. So I have two and three, and therefore, now I need to look at, all right, is the graph opening up like these two examples or does it open down? And again, we need to look at the A. In this case, the A is negative. So now I know my graph is gonna be opening down and it's gonna look something like that. Now again, we can still find points, right? By picking anything to the left of two or to the right of three. And therefore then we can swap them to the other side of the axis of symmetry. 
if we need to find the axis symmetry of the vertex, we're either going to have to go and use this rule or complete the square to go to that one. But ladies and gentlemen, those are the three most common ways that I use in the classroom to graph a quadratic. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, you're going to love the next video I have for you here.